yeah so yeah. Uh, yeah i guess so for, for so for me with ron um i i it's great this is this is my first initial <laughs> my first initial thing because there's just so many routes you can go down with with bringing him in you can you can have him step on and be the main player you can have moff gideon working for him um you know there are a lot of questions and how did he how did he get back you know how long did it take him to get back into the fold um you know we see we see ahsoka at the end of rebels show up and she's ahsoka the white basically you know she's like like gandalf um she's got the staff and she's looking at sabine so what does she tell sabine does she say is it i mean did thrawn leave ezra in the unknown regions and so sabine's off the map going to find ezra and thrawn's on his way back to 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 take over so that's that's certainly something um for ahsoka to be hunting him makes me feel like he's obviously off in the shadow so he's not like full-on ready to take over so i think um i'm beginning to think a little bit maybe less of the gideons working for thrawn and that now we have a lot of different people a lot of different players um that are that are that are on the stage and i think that's kind of cooler because then you can have gideon do his whole thing and then thrawn is doing something else something you know something something different we've talked about the possibility as before of thrawn coming back on and being a good guy um because yeah. he's got yeah. his he, thrawn has his own agenda and people love him yeah. so people yeah. love thrawn as this as this thing so um you, who knows maybe i don't know I, I don't know that entirely that thrawn and gideon are are working for each other right it's not like she had stormtroopers there yeah, right exactly exactly it, yeah, she yeah. had she had bounty hunters and droids and, well, and and you know stuff like that. So yeah, and and you go back and you look at the client versus Gideon. The client had different resources. His dusty, worn out kind of looking stormtroopers, and then Gideon shows up from that facility. I'm guessing uh, on Navarro and has these clean, pristine troopers. So you definitely see it's a splintered group, um, but they still have imperial uniforms. They've got imperial stuff. They've got whatever. Whoever is working for Thrawn right now, which we, the only the only the only uh, sample sampling we have is right here, um, they're not wearing that kind of stuff. They're they, and they actually are. They have ex military people, and they've got people who maybe had ties back to the Empire, but they're no longer there. They've went with Thrawn. Thrawn develops a really a good following among his crew. So on the Chimera, like they, if you read the books, they love like they respect him to a level that's like. They trust him. They respect him, even though he's an alien and aliens weren't really well looked upon in the Empire. Um, he has mad respect. He's the only grand. I mean, he's a grand right. admiral and like uh, yeah. he, he wins at every. I mean, he is not the only person who beats him is Ezra Bridger. That's it. Right. And and and, I, and the thing the thing I think people need to because um, pe maybe people who've watched Rebels and you know stuff like that is Clone Wars and Rebels is a very different telling of Star Wars because it's aimed at a very different audience in which you know you see people do things that are sometimes comical and stuff like that but that should not like tarnish or hinder or per or perhaps like persuade you to think of a character in a different light you know like in Rebels and stuff like that I mean you know like. Like look, just look, look at the difference between R two D two in the movies. Even R two D does like funny stuff, but he's not like Chopper. You know, I mean Chopper's ah, in there. You know, you know what I mean. And so you it's kind crazy. of have to view that. You have to view them yeah. as like different characters. I mean, yeah. the, uh, Vader in in even in Rebels compared to Vader in um the movies compared to Vader in Rogue One. Uh, we see a very different Vader at the end of Rogue One than we than we see you know in in the original. So you do have to you have to keep that in mind. Um. Thrawn is without question the ultimate tactician. He is the he is the ultimate general, the ultimate field commander. Um, you know, in in the old in the old in the books, right? As you know, he's 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 even like he he straight up challenge not challenge not openly challenges, but internally kind of challenges Palpatine and says what he's doing with the Death Star is dumb. That's right, like dumb. building yeah. build, wasting all of your resources on one giant space station is idiotic. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, so so to even even kind of think that as a, uh, you know, <laughs> is, is is pretty is pretty telling of just I mean, this guy's like, I mean, and again, Ezra makes the ultimate sacrifice. And as you've said, as before, getting him off the chess, the chess, the chessboard, yeah. because if Thrawn's there, as I mean, Grand Admiral Thrawn compared to Admiral Akbar, I love yeah. we love Akbar, but Akbar leads him right into a trap. 
Okay. Right. At, <laughs> Thrawn Absol- sets traps. Oh, Thrawn, Thrawn is like, okay, you know. Total- yeah, and actually, Matt's right. So, like, if Thrawn was there, I mean, after the first Death Star is destroyed, he would have been in out Emperor Palpatine's ear saying, build the fleet. Build the fleet like you've never built anything before. Because with the Death Star, you can only control one system at a time. Yes, it can bounce around and stuff, but you could keep, if you're the Rebels, all you have to do is have half your fleet here, half here, or a quarter here, a quarter here, and a quarter here. Keep it in four spots, and they cannot get to you quick enough. And you can keep moving, and you can avoid them. With the fleet, you can chase them down. You can be in their stuff at all times. And Thrawn knew that, and the Emperor makes the same mistake twice. I mean, almost pulls off, though, like, if they would have had more time, the Bothans, by the way, in Return of the Jedi, the fact that they find that station before it's fully, I mean, even though it is technically fully operational and, like, Palpatine gets there to, to make it so, I think they would have had backup shield generators. I think they would have yeah. had, you know, more things to kind of protect it off the forest moon of Endor. So, anyways, that that's a, that's a big deal. But I wanted to say one more thing about Thrawn in, in Legends and why I think it was important that they brought him up and that he is perfect to kind of fight against a Jedi his whole fight is against Luke Skywalker and Leia and um, trying to find a Jedi. He works with a mad Jedi, a mad, crazy Master Sabaoth, who's in the Thrawn trilogy, who was a clone, who is a clone of a former Master Sabaoth, who was good Master Sabaoth. And this guy's the crazy. He's, his memories are mixed and they're muddled, and he remembers being a good guy, but he's crazed and he's out of control and he thinks he should be. You know, he's on a planet called Wayland, which is where all of Emperor Palpatine's facility, like, there, his, there's a whole cloning facility there. Luke Skywalker is actually cloned. Luke is there and fights Luke. I mean, it's a crazy series. And so, and in that, one of the big things that Thrawn had was the Islamari, were these, were these, indiv- these um, creatures. Uh, they were on the planet Merkur. And on that planet, when, when Mara Jade and Luke show up there, if the Islamari are near... They cannot use the force. They cannot use it. They are, they felt a void when they went into it. They felt like they had been shielded or cut off from the force. It created a force repellent neutral bubble. If Thrawn has a couple of those bad boys on his shoulder, and by the way, in the books, he legitimately has a backpack created. They're just sort of like these creatures. They didn't move much. They're just like lazy lizards that just hung out in trees and chilled. But he had them chilling on his back. He put one in a backpack, and he walked around with a freaking lizard on his on his shoulders, and he could fight Jedi. <laughs> I'm like, this, this guy, and he does it because he knows he has the advantage, and he had the element of surprise for Jedi who didn't know that he had that. I mean, he knew it, and they didn't know it. And so yeah. it's a cool little, cool little interest. Look at the deep thing. cut. Look at the deep cuts that Ez is. Dude, at, at, I've been waiting for this for a long time. <laughs> I've been waiting for them to bring Thrawn in full bore. Let's go, you know? That is like oh a freaking butcher. That's like a butcher over here today. Just all these. I, all these I feel like this things. is what it, this is probably what it's like to sit in a room with uh, Dave Filoni and John Favreau. Probably is how I'm feeling oh, right no. now. <laughs> no, 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 no. When I hear Dave Filoni, I go, oh, uh, oh. Like, I'm like, <laughs> I love uh, again guys. with the Ewok reference, right? I, right? <laughs> oh, help me.